state loyalty for recognizing the need for a strong national government after the failure of the under the Arms Confederation. The founders then attempted to ensure that there would exist a balance of power between two governments, which would allow the citizens of America best to serve. Despite this, it has been claimed that the United States is, quote, very much a union of the states, jealous of their power, and resistant encouragements, unquote, by the national government. In the U.S. federal system, there is a balance of power between state and national government, as preserved by the limitations on both. The Constitution is written to have the national government limited in various ways that the state is not. So, while the national government would be limited on issues such as military, foreign affairs, and interstate commerce, the states would have power over all issues that, quote, concern the lives, liberties, and properties of the people, and the internal order and improvement and prosperity of the state, and, quote, as great. Federalist 45. The Tenth Amendment reaffirmed this by giving all powers not delegated to the national government within the Constitution to the state or the people. The Sixth Article of the Constitution balances state power by making the Constitution, as well as federal laws, treaties, the supreme law of the land, which imply the power of judicial review over state laws. This caused states to remain influential without overpowering the national government. Federalism within the U.S. government is beneficial in multiple ways. Madison defended federalism. Despite the benefits of federalism, there are certain problems that can arise, especially when a state is in direct opposition to the national government. In most cases, it is the court that must mediate between the two governments by interpreting the Constitution and determining the extent of powers. The argument that the states are hostile towards any invasion of the national government is not without, so any, is not without value. Generally speaking, states will take all constitutional measures to preserve the power and prevent it from being shifted into the hands of the national government. This is seen in U.S. versus Lopez, where it was challenged on whether or not the national government can regulate school gun laws. The court prevented the national government from gaining this power in the case with their decision that the Commerce Clause was not valid constitutional grounds to create the law in question. More recently, 26 suits were filed against the national government because of the controversies related to the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Federalism is essential to the uh, functions of our country. The two governments on occasion can have disputes, however they united in serving the people. In some ways, federalism in America is not the for some. They believe that in a federal system, the state government would be more important to people. Today, state governments remain powerful, but Americans tend to find themselves looking more towards the national government. Federalism is imperfect and yet extremely success, uh, successful and is well fit for America. Madison talks about the double security in the 
become a republic in the sense that each government will control the other. Do you think today the state governments are in a position to control the federal government? I do, I do believe personally that over time the state governments have experienced a reduction in power over certain issues, which has made them unable to check the national government as effectively as they are originally able to. Um, this can be seen in certain issues such as uh, education and marriage. For example, in the court case Loving in Virginia, the national government exerted some power over marriage, even though it was a state issue, by deciding that uh, the state could not create a law that it prevented marriage or couples. Adding on to what my colleague was saying, the court case DOMA is also an example of the national government taking some of the state's power, since marriage is a state issue. So I think that it could be checked, though, because it was ruled unconstitutional, because DOMA is not a national power, it's a state power. Going back to what my colleague said, part of the reason for the lack in uh, state's power is the decrease in effectiveness of the Tenth Amendment and that's the encroachment of the national government's powers. Okay, you, you can't have it both ways. Uh, you can't have a perfect balance uh, between states' rights and uh, national and federal government. So, which are you? Which do you think is more important, uh, the states' rights or the uh, federal government? Disagree with my colleagues because I believe that the national government would be more, um, it's more serving a common goal of the people. So, although it may not be pleasing one state completely, it's pleasing more than, uh, more than it would if it was only in that state. However, in contrast, state governments can tend to have more democratic measures. For example, many state governments include ability, uh, powers such as referendums, initiatives, and recalls. The recall, for example, is the ability of the people to decide that they're representatives not serving them well, so they can call them back and replace them with someone new, which is, for example, utilized in California when they recalled the governor and replaced him with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Adding on to what my colleague was saying, the referendum. In Rhode Island, we are voting on the ballot whether or not we want to have a constitutional convention. Every 10 years, we are allowed to have a constitutional convention. So if, if state governments should have more power because they're closer to the people than the federal government, would you suggest that municipal governments should have more power than the state? So now we'll give you some feedback. You did an excellent, excellent job. Um, I really enjoyed your opening presentation. Um, the, the citation of the Federalist 45 and 51, I quote the Federalist 51, is one of my personal favorites. Um, I think I, I love 
Mm-hmm. You know, Rhode Island had a rocky relationship to our Constitution at the beginning, but you really redeemed yourself. <laughs> Times I wanted to shot bingo because you <laughs> hit it right on the money. Uh, you know, this is just a, a discussion uh, about, uh, and it's not, a, it's not a test, it's not a right answer, it's not a wrong answer. It's just what do you know, and, and, res, and as you respond to these questions, and, and the interaction and the interplay between us and also between you as team members. I just thought you did a, an excellent job. You mentioned that. Uh, a number of things, including you know, quoting a Supreme Court justice, and I like that. I like that. And, and you got to the crux of the situation where we're talking about stuff from 250 years ago, and you were able to, to bring it up to the present, and, and whether it's court paper decisions or Katrina or whatever it might be. I just thought you did an excellent job. Congratulations.